Coming up, the 2012 World Junior Hockey Championship. The website crashed. That pretty well guarantees the 2012 World Junior Hockey Championship will be a big hit. Small wonder, the games are being held in Calgary and Edmonton, Alberta, hotbeds of hockey, and home to the NHL Calgary Flames and the Edmonton Oilers. But this tournament, featuring 10 top-ranked teams, is for the best kids in the world. Host Canada goes absolutely ape over ice hockey. And that's in the off-season. When the play is on, they go bananas. Thus, the website crashed. So many fans wanted to get tickets, the servers coughed, wheezed, and died. But this hockey manna from heaven is very much alive. It's played over the Christmas and New Year's season, with the final game being played at the Calgary Saddle Dome, 5th January 2012. It'll be the 36th edition, and is a round-robin format within each division. Edmonton has already revved in lick your chops anticipation of the popular and powerful rivalry renewal between Team USA and Team Canada continuing at Rexall Place. Be there and beware. I Was There is the official song composed by Calgarian Paul Brands for the 2012 IIHF World Junior Championship. Certainly parents for all the participating 20 and under players can relate. Being there buying and tying up those skates, warming up those little near frozen toes after Dave Shinney, driving the jet black of night to practices and games here, there and everywhere. Let's look at the host team. Don Hay, coach for the Canadian outfit, isn't freaking knowing that only three players are returning from last year's team. He figures there's more than enough skill to go around. Basically, with a huge pool of talent to draw from across Canada's junior leagues, the team to be formed, and which will hopefully gel, will have top dog players playing big kahuna, as well as role duties to make sure defense and offense are both equally emphasized and exercised. Four lines is the idea, so as to avoid sapping player strength, but come a tight situation or boneheaded playing by a player or two, that bench will shorten mighty fast. It's a slow process to winnow down the prospects to even make the training camp, let alone the final cut. As Kevin Prendergast, chief scout for the Canadian side will tell you, takes a lot of traveling, a lot of watching, a lot of interviewing, a lot of assessing, and no doubt a little bit of luck to find the right ingredients for hopefully what will be la creme de la creme. The cast comes in at 41 players strong. Okay, it's been a grind for the scouts, but how do you think the players feel? Especially those with oodles of skill, big fish in their own ponds, who just miss getting an invitation because of the dreaded numbers game. No doubt rejection at that young adult age can give a bad case of sour grapes and break a career before it really gets a chance to take off. There are something like 59 teams in Canada from which to cherry pick. 59 into 1 goes, well, a lot gets squeezed out. And how do scouts not lose their minds charting player potential and pitfall? Rate of development doesn't play out on a nice Excel graph. A growth spurt over a summer can have someone ready to take that next step. A player invited to an NHL training camp may now be more hard than hell to skate with the elite of his age group in this holy grail of hockey. Then again, they may get too cocky. Unforeseen, bad luck injuries will crop up. Some may find girlfriends a distraction. Some may lose focus in the miasma of drugs or booze. Last year's blossoming bud is this year's disastrous dud. But for that player from any team that makes and plays marvelously, not only will he maybe win or medal and receive just dessert accolades, he may get a big boost sweetener in his player rating by the time the NHL entry draft comes around. Looking for possible medalists? For the past 33 years, teams from Russia, USSR, CIS, or Canada have dominated. Of course, coaches being coaches like dominating defense. This is snoring boring to the once in a year armchair quarterback fan. Goals and pretty plays can't come fast and furious enough for this spectator. The world is starting to take hockey seriously. Really? Did you know that Mexico, Turkey, China, Australia, and Bulgaria, and other nations not normally associated with this sport, now have junior hockey teams? Granted, they're in lower divisions, whose championships are played elsewhere around the same time, but new blood into the game won't hurt one bit. Will pressure, playing in front of the hometown fans, cause the Canadian team to choke or excel? Time will tell. Canada was up 3-zip against Russia in the 2011 World Junior Championship, and quicker than you can say down the hatch with a vodka splash from Flask, the Russians poured in five goals in the third period to take gold. Canucks, collectively, metaphorically, and otherwise, how should we say, puked in their shoes. But Canada has a no-fluke, unparalleled history of junior hockey heroics to call upon. Twice that country has won the gold medal five years in a row, from 1993 to 97, and from 2005 to 2009. This squad always rates. And don't overlook the United States team. They'll be coached for the third time by Dean Blaze. They won it all in 2010. 
And it isn't great that while the hungry Canadians, the defending champs of Russia, and all the other challengers are sweating it out, skating their heads off, checking like crazy in their pursuit of the IIHF World Junior Championship 2012, we can sit at home, turn on TSN, and stuff ourselves silly, warm, cozy, and rosy, with all the Christmas and New Year's goodies lying about. Ah, it's grand to be a fan.